you know, um, yeah, and, and, and he went in there and, and, and uh, you know, I don't care how big of a superstar you are anywhere, if you were in the WWE, but even if you were in Pride or you were in, um, you know, any of these other organizations out there, your first walk into that octagon in, 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 a, in a fucking sold-out arena, Yeah, man, let me tell you, it'll get anybody. Everybody gets those jitters the first time, and uh, we knew. I mean, we knew he was going. I don't ever... I don't ever throw cans in at any of these guys that come from anywhere. Right. You want to fight in the UFC, you're going to fight a real guy. And, and, and Mickey Gall might have been 2-0, and oh, but Mickey Gall is legit, man. That kid's a tough kid. He's he's a tough up-and-comer. And, and uh, I respect Punk for giving a shot, man. Anybody who has the balls, especially when, when, you, uh, when you have what CM Punk has, you know, the notoriety <clears throat> and the fame and all that stuff, to put everything on the line at that point in your life, at that age, and to walk in there and, and showcase yourself in front of the world, man, very few people can do it. Everybody dreams of it. Yeah. Everybody wants it. Very few people can really do it. It's funny because if you see him walk out and you see right before he gets into the cage, the way he's looking to the audience, and I don't know if he's just used to that from the from the WWE because it didn't. He didn't look shook. He didn't look. Like, when I'm looking at a guy he's saying, all right, this guy knows he's in for fucking trouble. Like, he, he looked like he was enjoying the whole experience, you know? And then once it happened, he ran after him. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the one thing is that you can't... And, he, and he, first of all, he's a tough guy because he was taking a beating. He wasn't in that quick tap club. He was taking a beating, but he just did, he just, you just, he just did not have the, the muscle memory, the answers to get out of those positions. So I don't care how tough you are, you're just holding out for the inevitable at that point. So... It's not like he got down, hit a couple of times, and said, screw this. Like, James Tony that time was like, all right, man, I'm getting the hell out of here. Uh, he tried his ass off, you know what I mean? But uh, there was just, there's certain ways when a guy's on your back, when the guy's mounted, when the guy's got you in a position where <laughs> you, this, it, you can't, that's something you have to learn by escaping hundreds of times, thousands of times. You and know you what I mean? Muscle memory is Muscle memory. You, they, you can't rush that. So even though he's been doing nothing but training for the last two years, trying to cram in over like 10 years of, Training, you know what I mean? Experience and bad positions in two years. It's just plus rough. lots of guys always have this idea of what they think their a fight is going to be like. It's yeah. never what you think it's going to be. It's oh yeah, you know. And I don't care how much sparring you had or how many drills you went through. When you get into a fight, and, and especially in a show like that, first big show, yeah. you, you fight in the UFC your first time, and you want to be in a, you know, you want to be down the local armory, right. you know, with, with a few friends yeah. down. It's still tough. But to walk in, like, the event that he walked into takes a lot of balls. And yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I have a bet with Longo. Longo says, I bet he doesn't fight again ever. <laughs> I go, I, I, I think he's going to go on a smaller show, and I think he's going to have another fight. Uh. And Longo goes, no, I don't think so. And I, I, I think he does, because I don't think he did it just for the money. And he didn't get No, he would have stayed in WWE no. for just the money. He didn't get hurt. Because Longo is saying, like, basically, what is he going to do? He's going to go to the smaller show and make... Two G's and two G's the show. I don't know, like, but whatever it is. But I'm saying it wasn't for the money, and I'm saying he's going to go to a lower a level. And again, he has to fight pro because he went pro. You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't think he's. I think he'll do something on a smaller show to make him feel good. And what do you think about him fighting in the UFC again? You said his next fight should probably be amateur. I don't know if he's allowed to do that. Um, no, he can't you, fight amateur. Would, I, I, not no. amateur, but fighting a smaller a show. Oh, a non UFC yeah. fight. Would you consider uh, uh, giving him another uh, fight if he uh, keeps training? So what I told him to do is uh, go home, spend some time with your wife, have, you know, be normal for a little while, and uh, we'll get on the phone and talk. Obviously, we haven't talked yet, but uh, we will. We'll see what's next. Okay, good. I like that that's not off the table. It's a possibility. And, yeah. and, and the way he handled after probably didn't hurt. The fact that he was, yeah, he's cool about everything after and, you know. Yeah. You know, we'll see. I got to <laughs> talk to him. I got to talk to him and see wh wh where his head's at and what he's thinking and, uh, you know. Does it drive you nuts when fighters attack you, or are you so used to that at this point? Like, Mark Hunt has been very vocal uh, about the company and, and, and stuff, and does that affect you at all? Not even a little bit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah, the, believe me, it's more than fighters that attack me. I mean, right. there's tons of his fans and everything else. I mean, if, if you let that stuff bother you, I'd have jumped out the window a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've, I've talked to you before about it. I just thought it was funny. There's been times where I've seen you arguing with someone with an egg profile. I'm like, you have a million followers, and you're talking to some guy with three followers. And I have so picture. much fun doing that. Yeah. Like, if I have time to kill and I'm hanging out, I love it.
Yeah. yeah. So if social I just... media is fun. See, I embrace both sides of it. You know, you can't go on social media and just expect to be loved. Like, oh, you're the greatest, and you're the this, that, that. Right. The bad's got to come along with it, too. It's not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like your decisions. So I, 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 I take it all in, man. I, I, uh, I like the good and the bad. I love to mix it up. And you don't block anybody. Uh, I, I, know, I block it left and right. I know. People, uh, people say anything to Matt. He's, he's, I get he's, sensitive. He gets yeah, crazy. He certainly does. I block Let me, me. tell you what. You, I you block got, Jimmy. Yeah, no, you got to be a next level uh, douchebag to get blocked by me. Yeah. You just got to be. You got to be a I just don't like any negative, negativity idiot. in my life. I like negativity. Why? I fucking feed on it. If you feed on that. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Bring that shit to me. Yeah. I love it. It doesn't Thank bother you. you. Oh, it, 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 it fuels me. I, it, I love it. So what do you do to shake it off? Like, you know, it's hard not to go home sometimes. Like, there's been times where I've literally been driving, and I'm thinking about fucking something someone said to me, and it's like, I, I don't know this guy. Like, why am I allowing this to bother me? It's just irrational. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, what's funny is uh, the fans that come in and say stuff, fans are always going to have opinions, and, and I love the good and the bad and all of it. I love reading it all. There's some funny shit that can be said about you, too. When you <laughs> oh, read. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, the, the media drives me fucking crazy, you know, because these guys... Uh, you know, some of them actually have some credibility. And when I listen to these guys talk about the business and stuff like that, it just, it, that, it drives me nuts. What well, do they get wrong? More they, than they everything. Think? They get everything wrong. These guys have never built a fucking business in their life. Nobody's ever depended on a paycheck from any of them. They really have never done anything. Are they just misinformed or are they just they're, haters or are they just hateful? They're misinformed. And they misinform. That's what they do. Oh. They're just, what do they know? What When I see them, guys that are fucking, whatever, MMA writers or whatever the fuck they're supposed to be, trying to talk about the business. Yeah. You have no fucking idea what you're talking. First of all, this has never been done. Yeah. And if you listen to half of these idiots, you know, over the last 16 years, UFC wouldn't even be where it is today. You know, and they're yeah. always talking about if they do this and the demise and the pay-per-views aren't this and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> Fucking talk, talk about fights and fighters. Stop talking about the business because every one of you, all of you know nothing. Yeah. You know nothing. You know nothing. Yeah. Know. I was sitting there. When I hear these guys or read about them trying to talk about the business, it's... <laughs> Check out the size of this fella. Just caught him in the grass. I believe he's the biggest bloke I've ever caught down here in Miami. I think he's like a fucking baby velociraptor or some shit. I don't know what he is. He'll bite the shit out of you. Careful. I'm going to set him free now.